Begin. As Texas Longhorns, all of us used to go around campus saying, Texas, hook them. Well, after my presentation, you're going to have to go all around the world knowing how to play Texas, hold them. And remember, if you keep your cards right, you might just have to play cards. I'll start off by giving you the poker table of contents today. I'll start off by explaining the hands and the types of suits and the numbers involved with the game. Following that, I'll explain the Texas Hold'em names and the player positions involved. Following that, I'll explain the chips and the bets. There's all kinds of chips and bets involved also. I'll give you a legendary quote. Following that, I'll show you a few poker faces. And then I'll finalize my presentation by playing a little game of Viva Las Vegas. All right, so hands, suits and numbers. As you can see, there's all kinds of suits and numbers involved. Starting from the bottom right to the top left shows the least valuable card to the highest valuable card. As you can see for demonstration, for high hand, out of the five cards, for example, this would be a king in this case. Following that would be a one pair, which is on this example a pair of aces. Then you have a two pair, and then three of a kind, you get the idea. Then there's a thing called a straight, which is when you have five cards that are all going in numerical order. Following a straight is a flush. So when all your cards have the same suit, in this case, they're all clubs. And then after that is a full house, which is when you have three cards that are all three of a kind, along with a pair at the same time. Then you have four of a kind, which is when you have four of the same card, that's a rare find. And the last two, a straight flush. It's when you have five numbers that are going in numerical order, and they all have the same suit. And last but not least, the royal flush. Who here has heard of a royal flush? All right. Now, Royal Flush, I've played Texas Hold'em hundreds of times. I've never seen a Royal Flush before. And according to, according to possibilities in poker.com, you know what the chance and possibility of landing a Royal Flush is? That's right, one in every 2.6 million hands. A Royal Flush is when you have the highest value cards and numbers, and they all have the same suit. Texas Hold'em names and positions. There's all kinds of names and positions in Texas Hold'em. And Texas Hold'em is played in a numeric, or is played in a chronological and is played in a uh, clockwise fashion. So as you can see here, the dealer, otherwise known as the button, is shown there. And to his left is the small blind, and to his left is the big blind. And before each hand is played, before each game is played, the blinds throw in, they ante up some chips. The small blind always bets in half as much as the big blind. So, for example, if the small blind anties up $100, the big blind anties up $200, and so on and so forth. Chips and bets. As you can see here, there's all kinds of variations of chip values and colors. A chip can range from $1 all the way to $10,000. That's insane, okay? And there's all kinds of ways to bet in poker as well. There's two main ways you can be a, a really good gambler. The one way is called being tight aggressive, and there's another way called being loose aggressive. Tight aggressive. Being a tight aggressive poker player is when you always fold your cards. You never play the game because you always want to have the good hand. You're really a conservative poker player. Then there's loose aggressive. You always play the cards no matter what kind of hands you have. You may have a good hand or a bad hand. You'll always play the game. For me, for personal experience, I can tell you it's always good to be somewhere in between. Now I'd like to introduce you to a 10-time World Series of Poker champion, a Texas native, Doyle Texas Dolly Brunson. And he has something to tell you guys. 90% of the hands aren't shown in a poker game. What does that mean? Well, you got to have a good poker face, all right? And unless James Bond or Lady Gaga, you really got to understand the essence of what it means to have a good poker face. And I've played hundreds of games again. And I've never once given, given away my poker face, no matter what kind of hands I have. So it's always good to not be a really bad bluffer. At the same time, it's always good to keep a good poker face and always keep a mental and physical composure. So that way you'll have the best card. Now that you know pretty much the basics of the hands, the chips, and the styles of betting, and pretty much the ins and outs of how to play Texas Hold'em, now it is time to play a little game of Viva Las Vegas. Now I have three players ready to play. So now we don't have real chips and anything like that, so pretty much whoever has the highest hand wins the game. So let's play. Five of clubs, six of hearts, and the queen of hearts. There's the flop. Here comes the turn. Got a ten of, ten of spades. Final card. King of diamonds. What do you got? Ten of diamonds and six of clubs. 
What do you got? Five of hearts and four of spades. Okay, what do you got, man? Two queens, spades, and a diamond. All right, lucky you. <laughs> Two queens. All right, so you have one pair. You have a pair of fives. It's a pretty good hand. And you said you had a six, a pair of six, and you have a five and a four. So you look at you, you have one pair, you have a six and a ten. So you have two pair, which so far you're the winner so far. And you said you had what? Two queens. So you got Mr. Lucky Guy over here. You got two queens. And what do you see on there? Another queen. You got three queens. So three of a kind beats two pair and one pair. So congratulations, you're the winner. And you get a slap in wristband. <laughs> As Texas Longhorns, we're always used to going around campus saying Texas book them. Now you can go all around the world knowing how to play Texas hold them. And remember, if you can play your cards right, you'll end up with the right cards.